Hi folks, this is the video on how to construct this desktop organiser, magazine holder, junk journal holder, ephemera holder. Uh, you can do all sorts of things with this. You could have little folios or envelopes uh, containing your bits and pieces of ephemera and keep everything organised. You can have a series of these with different things in them. You can also, and this is what really excites me about this, is you can use this as a junk journal holder. Rather than a traditional cover, you could put three signatures uh, can get it in. You can put three signatures in there uh, and this with, you know, charms or a tassel and dangles down the side and coordinating papers, obviously, would look absolutely beautiful. This is what it looks like before you put the matting on the top. And depending on which kit you're using, um, your patterns and obviously the designs will be different, but the construction methods are exactly the same. Now I'm using a uh, pulp board for this. It's the same stuff that beer mats are made out of and I love it because it gives you the bulk of chipboard but without the density. It's much easier to cut through and much more pleasant to work with and I really like it. You could alternatively use cereal packaging. You could stick a couple of pieces together to give you the rigidity. You can use Amazon packaging, uh, all sorts of things. And by the time you've matted it uh, with card on the outside and on the inside, you've got really quite a nice rigid thing that you're going to be really Really, really proud of and happy to have sitting on your desk or as the most incredible gift with a series of journals uh, in there. So let's go ahead and have a look how we construct it. So here are the two pieces that I'm going to use as templates. I've got the two sides and I've got the, the back, the base and the front. Now there are several ways to go about transferring this onto whatever card you decide to use to make these out of. I like pulp board, uh, also called beer mat board. So there are several ways to get this onto your uh, card. Um, one of the ways I'm going to show you is by using a pointy tool. Now positioning your paper on top of your piece of card and being sure it's not going to move if you want to take put a little bit of tape on the edges and then you're quite simply going to make a point everywhere where you need to draw a line. This works very well if you're just using straight lines. So this is the technique I'm going to use for this page. If you're making going to be making a few of these you might like to just cut out uh, the templates out of this card and draw around them. Alternatively, you can glue this piece of card to the piece of card that you're going to be using to construct the form out of and just cut out your lines. So I've made a little mark everywhere. I've made a little hole everywhere that I need to draw a line. So I can take this off now. I can see all my little holes. I can refer back to this, take my ruler and I can feel quite confident that I'm going to be getting it right. It should take me two or three cuts with a nice sharp blade. I've got a nice new blade in here and it really does cut through quite easily this stuff. I do like it. If you're worried that you're going to lose a point in your cuts, you can just go along with a pencil and just draw a little X on top. Oh, a new blade is a bliss. I've made another one of these today already and <laughs> I used a blunt blade in it. It was much trickier than this. There we are. This one goes across the top. This is my back piece. Then I have my middle piece. You see where I put the cross there? I can see really easily where I need to be putting my ruler. There we go. There's my back, my base and my front all cut out. Now for the curve here, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I could glue this sheet down and there'd be no harm in that. It would give me extra rigidity, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put a little bit of tape over here so that I know that it's not going to move. I'm going to go in with my knife and I'm going to cut through both layers. Now when I was designing this, I was really pleased 
um, that I came up with the idea of making these two shapes but together so you'd only have one line to cut to get your two sides one curved line so I'm going in quite deep here very slowly very carefully I don't want to slip I don't want to cut myself and with a nice sharp blade that's really easily I'm really nearly through in one cut there that's really satisfying I think that should do it and turn it over and have a look there we go that's pretty much it and I can either now um, make my holes in the corners which I think I will I've only got four to do I can remove the tape it saves me cutting through that extra layer take the tape off I've got my four points whoops and I can just go ahead and cut those and there we are there are my two sides perfect and here comes the bit that I love the actual constructing this is my black masking tape it's a crepe tape <laughs> it's got a slight stretch to it and a bit of flexibility lovely satin finish um, and it's the same kind of tape that you'd use for masking I don't know if that's the term in the US the stuff that you use around your windows before you do your decorating in your house usually comes in this sort of color or a paler color than this but it's the same stuff just black now to construct this I'm going to get all my bits and bobs out of the way so I've got a nice uncluttered work surface I'm going to begin with my base which is the medium sized piece I've got here, which marries up with this side and this side. So I'm going to get a piece of tape, move those out of the way a little, get a piece of tape, a bit longer than I need, place, place it sticky side up, put it half, put this piece half on and half off, then I'm going to stand this piece upright, butt it up against the base, resting on the tape, not on the base. And when I'm happy that that's nice and flush, I'll drop it down and it gives me the perfect width that I need to be able to construct it when I come to stand it up again later. So I'll do that, a little bit of tape across the bottom here. Same thing on the other side. A little bit longer than I need, sticky side up, half on, half off, butt this piece up against the edge, resting it on the, on the tape, not on the base, drop it down, fold my edges over, put a little bit more tape on to cover that gap. And now I can go ahead and construct the back and the front. I can see where I need to be by folding that up. Take a piece of tape, a little bit shorter this time, I don't want to go over. Half on, half off. Same again, butt this up on the tape make sure it's nice and flush, drop it down and there we are. I'll put a little piece of tape over here as well so I don't have to deal with that afterwards. Don't worry about these little bits at the moment, we'll deal with those after. Now this piece at the front here can go only one way. If you turn it the other way you'll see it's a little bit short so don't make the mistake of doing that. Make sure it's bang on with the width of your base. Whoops, there goes my tape. this a little short, half on half off, stand this piece upright, put it up against the base or make sure it's nicely lined up. You want everything to be as square as possible. <laughs> That'll do nicely and I'll cover this piece up as well.
and there we have the basic form coming together really really well and before I go any further and you could do this first I always forget this bit you could tape this edge and this edge these curved edges before you put put the thing together it is much easier to do it that way it's just that I always forget so what I'm going to do here is stand the piece upright it's a bit tricky to see on video I appreciate but I'll do my best to illustrate it I'm going to run a piece of tape from this beginning edge in the middle and if I just press it down a little I can see the spine there and then I'm just going to run this piece of tape all the way along my curve lifting it off if I need to if it's not central it's a beautiful low tack tape it uh, it allows you a lot of maneuverability you can make mistakes you can lift it off it's not a problem make sure we've got that curve in tight there turn it round go over the top I could go right the way down the other edge but I'm not going to I'll just cut it off there to make life easy for myself and I'll pop that down like that now then with my little scissors I'm going to make snips it's not dissimilar to dressmaking if you've got corners and curves, you need to cut your binding or your seams to allow them to fold down nicely. So wherever I've got a curve here, and you'll see, I don't know if you can see this on the video, I've got a snip, 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 and I'm going to go in between those snips on the other side so that I'm not going to go right the way through the tape. And then, I can just push with my fingers, push the tape down like this. It only takes a second. And again, I've got a curve here. Let's see if I can show you here. <laughs> I'll make some snips here. And the same on the other side, in between the snips that I've made. And I've got two on the corner here that I need to make and now I can just push all this tape down if you get little crinkles in it it doesn't matter it's very forgiving and you won't see it when you're looking at the glory of the finished box and when you've got that down you can go over with your thumbnail or a folding bone and you can just press out those creases you can go down and reaffirm that top edge there we go lovely i'm going to go down this edge because it'll save me messing about later on when i'm trying to get a black border on the inside so i'll just take my tape stick it to the vert to the narrow edge of the card and then bring it around like that i'm going to do the same on all these three sides so half on half off you can do it this way if you want to half on half off and just fold it around kind of pull it around with your fingers so that it's nice and tight now then you may find that you get little bits like this you can either put another piece of top tape on the top you can do that with this tape it's so lovely and thin um, you won't notice the bulk alternatively well, it's something I use a lot is a nice thick black permanent marker pen any little bits you can just fill in like that uh, like you get these little bits here from the snips you can just fill that in with your pen and you won't notice when it's finished or you can go with, another, with a little bit of tape like I say so I'll cut this one half on half off I'm going to use a different technique now and I'm going to put the tape underneath my work just to show you another way to do things so there and then you can take your scissors snip in diagonally here fold this piece round and then you can just fold this piece round as normal this piece here I'm going to cut longer 
half on, half off. And then I'm going to make a little snip here, make a little snip on this other side without getting in the way of the video if I can. Fold these pieces in, fold this piece down, and then I've got these two little extra bits that will just fold around the back. I've got a little bit of extra there, I can either fold that down or I can snip it off. So that's that done. So I've got this edge to do now. I can do it the same way I tackled that edge there, or I can do it differently. And for the sake of the video, I'll show you the other technique of doing this. Pop that piece under there, half on, half off. Make my little diagonal cut here, fold this piece around, make a little cut there, fold this little fella in, fold this piece over, and then I've got another piece here that I can fold over the top. Now for this piece, I'm going to use smaller pieces of tape. I'm going to pop it half on, half off, like this. And then I'm going to make my little snips. And just fold these pieces over. And I'll keep going up all the way like this. In little pieces do a longer piece here because I've got more of a straight so I know I'm safe to do that like that I probably just pull this one all the way over I might get some creases but we'll see how that works out that's okay I can get some little pieces of tape and pop these over here like I say layers don't matter with this tape you can do what you want. This is a bit of a messier way to do it than the other technique. But if you really don't like going over this edge, then you can do it like this. Another way to do this, of course, is you can just paint these edges in black. But this tape is so good. So I'll just go over about there. I might get away with. So I've got enough on that side, hopefully. And I should have enough on this side. I really do prefer the other technique. But like I say, I just wanted to show this one. There we are. I've got a little bit on this edge here. I can do anything with it. I can fold that round. I can cut it off. I think I'll trim this one off. And then I'm just going to go down this one. <laughs> Come on, tape. Half on, half off. Come on, get straight. Push that round like that. I'll have a check over, see if I've got any little white spaces. Tiny little bit there, tiny little bit down here. Other than that's looking good. So that's a little tiny bit here that I might struggle with when I come to put my matting on. Turn it over, have a look how that's looking. That looks great. I've got a little tiny bit down there. A bit more than I would want. I could put another piece of tape over there. Look, that's looking good. I think I've got enough around here. Uh, and I've got this front edge. This is going to be my front. So I'll put a bit of tape. Over what will be the top edge of the front. Make my little snips give me a neat edge. And just for the sake of neatness, so that I know that it's all covered, I'll pop a little bit of tape on here.
burn a little bit of tape on this side. So that's all my borders done without the mess and faff of painting or using the black cardboard gutter strips, um, which I find a very time consuming and quite laborious process. So now I can actually start to construct the thing. So I'm going to bring up my sides to meet the back. Just check that everything fits, even though it's a bit late now. <laughs> And then I'm going to cut a nice long piece of tape. I'm going to go half on, half off this back section. There. I'm going to bring up the two sides together. Make sure they're butting up, they're nice and tight together. And then I'm going to force, I don't know if you can see that on the video very well, I'm forcing this tape round. So I've got a nice tight join there. There's not going to be any play in it. A couple of little creases, but that's fine. We can get rid of those quite simply with the back of a thumb or a folding bone. Tuck these edges under. I might need to employ my scissors there or I can just fold that under like that. So that's one side complete. I'm going to do the same again. the other side half on half off bring up my other side to meet it make sure it's nicely butted butted in together and then pull up the tape and force it round so that it's a nice tight join now even though we seem to have gone over this piece twice with tape it's a good idea to do that because then all your insides are taken care of and you haven't got to go fiddling about trying to force bits of tape down here, which is your other option if you don't tape all of your edges first. So I can trim a little snip in there. Don't need all of that. Cut down there. And fold these pieces over to give me a nice neat finish. And then I've just got this front edge to do which having just come through what we've just come through is an absolute doddle. A little bit of tape under there. We might as well do the two sides together. A little bit of tape under the other side. And then we just bring the front up. Make sure it's all nice and tight together. And push that tape around so it's a nice tight join. bit of a fiddle on the camera I'm sorry you can't see that very well can you just make sure that's nice and neat now I've got a little bit of extra here that I want to cover up so I'll just put another little bit of tape on there snip down fold that over fold that one in and I've got a nice neat finish there. And the same on this side. There we are. Now on this side, I can either cover this with little bits of tape or I can just go in with my black marker pen. any tiny little bits that I might see that are white. Now this side here, I'm not sh totally sure that I'm going to have enough of a border on these edges. I think I probably will and I can always deal with it again at the time if I need to. So that's the basic form complete and depending on the kit that you're using you'll now go over and just simply put some glue some matting over the top the pieces are shaped. You print those out onto card to give you a little bit more rigidity and stick those on. Um, you can print out two sets of these if you want to and do the insides the same. Or you can cut these out, use these as a template, draw around them onto your own pattern papers to stick in the inside. 
and that's your completed desk organizer, journal holder, ephemera holder. You can use these for all sorts of different things. I think they're really, really lovely. And also, look at that. <laughs>